Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Blast the Process 3. We're raising money for fee uh, for Save the Children, and we're also raising Sega Awareness, showing you all, all those amazing Sega games that you might have missed because you had productive childhoods not wrought with horrible highlight games. I have Mike Wuyama here. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, good. I guess I'm doing slightly worse because I am playing Super Highlight, which... Uh, Unlike what the game suggests, is not a Super Nintendo game. It is actually a Sega Genesis games game. It's one of it's actually one of the first uh, third party games, both um, when the Mega Drive was released in Japan and uh, when when the Genesis was released in the U.S. Which and explains it like why it looks so ugly. Yeah, it looks like a really ugly NES game. <laughs> it's disgusting. Uh, yeah. Without further ado. Oh, oh, and go ahead. I, and go I know ahead. we had a naming incentive, and uh, I saw there were, there were, there was a bid war between two of them. Uh, and which one uh, is the winner? The winner is Pogchamp. Okay, Pogchamp. Let's see. G. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is create our character, and we're going to pick the monk. Um, that's by far the best class because it gets really good stat growth. Aside from health, uh, I want the strength to be higher. That's good. And we're trying to have uh, 14 is the max amount of life you can start off with. And we want that because health is ironically the most important stat. Um, and it's for a really dumb reason I'll explain later in the game. And you get a 50% uh, experience bonus uh, until you hit level 5 with the monk and the priest, which is actually really important for the leveling route, and the monk and the priest only need half the experience that the warrior and the thief do uh, to get the first six spells, which is also important in our experience route. Uh, I can exp I might have time to explain the other classes later, but this game actually has very little downtime. And with that, we're going to have our adventure of PogChamp. And Woo! three, two... One, and go. So first thing we're going to do is set the speed to fastest, because it's a speed run. We're going to throw some coins in this pond to get level four. And we, every time it says, lucky, you get 30 experience. And we've done it five times, which means 150. That is seven. Eight. <laughs> this is. <laughs> this is number 12. We are halfway done. And yes, it's 24. And, then, and so the reason why we're doing that is uh, we need to get up to level 4, and this is far the fastest way to get up to level 4. Um, there's really no way around this, because the enemies in this area, I think the highest uh, value experience target is around 15 experience. And let me just double check my experience. Okay, I need to do this about 4 more times. We're almost done. Gonna level up. That's what the church is for. Okay. That is bad health growth. Um, that is very good health growth. And that is amazing health growth. So what looked like it was going to be bad health growth actually turned out to be amazing health growth. Now we're in the store. This song is called Omise. It means store in Japanese. And we did that to buy items so we wouldn't starve because this game has uh, is has realism and you can starve to death in this game and also as a safety for the first dungeon. We also purchased the dagger, which is the best weapon we can equip at this point, or we can afford at this point, I should say. 
Also, um, there's also a club, but it does less damage than the dagger, and it is also lighter than the dagger, because super high life things. And for the first day, we're just going to search a random spot in the ground and get 10,000 gold. And because of this, uh, money is actually not a concern in the run. Um, thanks to this 10,000 gold, um, at any other point that we'll need money, um, we'll get it from the level grinding that we'll do. And I do notice that someone mentioned uh, the weight system, which has been planned around, so it's mostly a non-factor during this run. I will uh, show it off at one point so you can see um, what dealing with the weight in a normal playthrough is like. And now we're going to zoom to the first dungeon. And the reason why we um, threw all those coins in the pond, which actually doesn't cost any money. Uh, you do have to use the coin in the pond, but it doesn't spend the coin. Oh, that's nice. I already took a hit. Uh, should probably use a potion and not be stingy. As I'm not using a potion and being stingy. So this is the first dungeon. Not the greatest song, but not the worst either. And we are what we're trying to do is that we're trying to get to the power source, which turns on the elevator, and then we're going to zoom to the boss. Um, we get up to level 4, because that's the minimum level you can be to beat this uh, dungeon. If you're at level 3, then you can't beat the boss. Oops. Thanks for getting my way back. Um, one flaw of playing on fastest is that the in-game time goes by really quickly, so, you, so even though you're moving super fast, you have to be really quick in the reflexes, like um, if there's an enemy in your way, or if there's any potential danger. And we're going to actually change it to fast. I'm, don't worry, we're still going fast. We, st we still have some of the blast processing. Um, and the reason why we change it to fast is so I don't die super fast. Um, the problem with constantly playing on on fastest is that, first off, the enemies will kill you really fast. And I, I'm not even playing fastest. I'm just playing fast right now. Uh, and secondly... Um, the actions to time ratio is really not in your favor if you're constantly playing on fastest. Okay, good. I got pretty nice RNG. Ooh! Never mind. And uh, it's not a true super high light run until you have at least like 10 um, near death experiences per run. Okay, please let me through. Please let me through. Uh... Yeah, well, I could fight that vampire, but it's not really worth it at this point because I don't have the Stone of Warrior. And the Stone of Warrior is what I'll get in the second town, but I can't get to the second town until I beat the first boss. Okay, and that was the most dangerous part of the dungeon, so I'm putting the speed back to fastest. Because even though um, I'm actually going to set the speed down to slow, which ironically is the fastest way to kill the boss, uh, it is it does actually save a second or two to, to switch like that. And now we're fighting Hexmoke, keeping it PG. And what he usually does is that he turns once uh, during uh, a loop. And that was actually pretty good luck. You do have to be careful because if you go into that blue area, you just fall off and die. Because you're on the 199th floor. Of course you die if you fall off. Well, actually we're on the 200th floor, but you know. What's one more floor going to do to you? Fortunately, it's pretty easy. It, it's just very RNG heavy. Fortunately, I'm getting really good RNG. Although, uh, every time you hear a ding, 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 that means he's dodged my attack. And you're going to hear that a lot because my level is fairly low. And that just means... And there's not really a whole lot I can do about that. So even though my RNG was pretty good with getting a lot of hits on him, a lot of those hits were dodged. And that is the first boss. Hellsmoke down. So we're going to change the speed to fastest because speed runs. And now I have the Cloudstone. So if I fall off now, I won't die because Cloudstone. Yeah. And this allows us access to the Heavenly City. If um, I tried to walk in the clouds without the Cloudstone right there, um, I would have just fallen to my death. So now we're getting the Stone of Warrior, which not only increases my attack power, but also gives me auto fire. And now we're buying a bunch of medicine flasks. We're going to buy them until I can't buy anymore. 
And because this is an old game, you just have to do it one at a time because good interfaces. Um, we're going to need at least two rations of food. Yeah, that's not good. We're going to buy some expensive medicines. We don't need expensive medicines right now, but they're going to uh, be useful later in the game. Actually, wait a minute. I'm going to need one more ration of food because at 1300 and 1900 hours, I'm likely going to reach 1900 hours, you do automatically eat a ration of food, which heals you, but also takes up one of your food rations. And yes, this is a Genesis game. It is called Super High Light. It is not a Super Nintendo game, and it looks like a really ugly NES game. <laughs> um, this was actually originally released for uh, Japanese PCs, like the uh, MSX2 and the PC88 uh, back in 1987. When it was ported to the Genesis, they didn't really decide to upgrade it. So now that we have the Stone of Warrior, I have Auto Fire, which is really good. That's actually um, the more important part of having the Stone of Warrior than even uh, the attack power upgrade, which is also nice. And basically, we're just trying to get um, whoa, about uh, 5,000 experience here, and we put on fast instead of fastest, because A, so that enemies don't murderize me as hard, and B, um, it's just it just works out better for grinding. Like, it's it just like the in-game time to... Because you will get tired after 2300 hours, and that means your strength eventually decreases to the point where you can't even kill a single enemy. And so uh, it just works out that it's just best to grind at fast speed and not fastest. And if you're a half tile off horizontally like that, or I guess I should say vertically, um, you won't get hit by enemies, which is actually really nice as a safety. And as you might notice, this game doesn't have translation. Um, it's pretty clear that they didn't get, like, a native English speaker to translate this game. Because, you know, old games didn't have, like, a high budget or anything like that. That um, It is worth noting that the translation is actually better than the original uh, Japanese PC versions, which do have an English mode. And, like, the English in those, in, um, in those Japanese uh, PC versions, it's, like, completely broken. <laughs> Just total English. Um, speaking of the Japanese versions of this game, uh, it is worth noting that even though we are grinding a whole bunch and, and we had to throw a whole bunch of coins in the pond, uh, this game was actually, what they did for the Western re release is that they made the experience uh, requirements about half of what they are in the Japanese version, and they made make enemies uh, give about double the experience they give in the Japanese version. So this experience route just doesn't work in the uh, Japanese version of this game. Um... The coin toss does work in the Mega Drive version, although not in the Japanese PC versions. So in the Japanese PC versions, you just have to grind your face off, and the Mega Drive version, just coin toss like crazy. Um, let's see. And I have enough experience. I have 5,200 experience, which is enough not only to get up to level 6 and get um, the 6 spells I need for the run, it also ensures that after I beat the dragon... I will be able to get level 8. Yes, if you die, you return to the last inn you rested at, because that's your save point. Um, I will try to occasionally answer questions in chat, but uh, one of the ironies of this game is because I'm playing at such fast speeds, there's actually not a lot of downtime. <laughs> And uh, good monsters actually do not try to kill you. Um, but the morality system doesn't actually really play much of a factor in this game, which I'll explain later. And now we have two of the most important spells in the game. The Cure Spell, which helps us, you know, not die. And the Move Spell, which helps us move in between towns. And we're getting to level 6. Um, you can only level up at the churches. And it's spent... And uh, it's worth noting that to get those spells, it did cost experience. You spend experience to get uh, spells and levels. Okay, so one of the main enemies in this game are the NPCs. They get in your way a lot, and uh, you can uh, just screen transition to try and get 
a better position from them. That was pretty bad RNG right there. Not really a whole lot I could do about it. You can't really do that against enemies because um, the game will remember their position. You can only do that if an enemy is on the edge of the screen and then you spawn into it because the because the game will always prioritize your sprite over the enemies and the enemies and the, that enemy will just disappear. And what's a Hide Lied? Well, Hide Lied is a series of games that takes place in a place called, I kid you not, Fairyland. And uh, it's actually a really popular, well-acclaimed series in Japan, at least back in the 80s it was. Um, I think it helps that it was released in Japanese PCs uh, back in 1984, so it was considered completely revolutionary, whereas in America it was released uh, three years after The Legend of Zelda and looked like complete dog poop compared to it. So we're sleeping here at this inn again uh, because to get a move point. Um, the way the move spell works is that you get a point at the City of Woods, which is that first town I was in with where I could level up at the church and the like, um, by default, but then you don't get the other points until you sleep at an inn. I did already sleep at the inn in the Heavenly City, but it doesn't count until after I get the move spell. So we're getting the Silver Sword, because that's required for the best weapon in the game. And I was able to push that grave because I had over 50 intelligence. Yes, you need to be smart enough to push a grave, which is actually another reason why we use the monk. Um, if I had the... The thief or the warrior, they might not even have enough intelligence to push that grade. This is, again, another move point. Um, this is where the marathon route or the uh, level 14 route diverges from the level 12 route. Um, the level 12 route just plays the game at the thinnest of margins, and we're not going to see that in this uh, marathon because it's just not marathon safe at all. Like, there's a very good chance I would not be able to complete the run. But the level 14 route is relatively marathon safe. And now I have the lightsaber. Please don't uh, sue a Star Wars. And look at my attack point. Boom! It goes up because it's the strongest weapon in the game. Um, I'm throwing away my dagger because it's not giving me... Oh, wow. I have a ton of food rations. Okay. As you saw, I was moving a little bit slower. That meant I was encumbered. And... The reason why we're not going directly to the dragon in this route is so I can ha have a better weapon against the dragon. And um, have the life water for the dragon. Um, what the life water does is that if you if you have it equipped and your hit points hit zero, then you get a heal that's roughly around a 25 or 30 health, not too sure which one. And so now we're going to go to, wow, that, is, that NPC is in the worst spot. <laughs> now we're going to go to the Cave of the Dead. In the treasure chest, there's nothing. All right, let's check it again. Because, you know, obviously, you always want to check the treasure chest again. But by hand, there's even no traps. Treasure chest, there's nothing. Check it again, the treasure chest has full bust, and there's a stairway leading down to this cave! And that's how you find the second dungeon. There are some hints to it, but it's really... But the game never blatantly tells you, and we're putting it fast so we don't die right away if an enemy attacks us. Um, we're just kind of stabbing around since we can't really see... Um, what's going on in the cave in case an enemy approaches me, which just happened right there. And um, the reason why I can't see is that you're supposed to have a lamp or the flash spell here, and I have neither one, so I can't see anything. And we're going to set the speed fast for the boss, because we want to go fast, and the boss always moves at the same speed, no matter what. Whereas you attack way faster and fastest. I don't... Yeah, I wasn't hitting the boss. There we go. We, okay, we killed the first head. You just don't want to uh, run into the boss's heads. Because that does a lot of damage. Yeah, like that. Okay, I have acquired a bunch of experience. Okay. 
the first thing we're going to do is use the Cure Spell to make sure we don't die. The second thing we do is that we use the magic to disarm the chest. There are many booby trap chests in this game, and the only way to disarm them, because we're at a low level, is to use the Learn Spell. If we don't use the Learn Spell, the trap activates and we don't get what's inside the chest. So we're going here to get a bunch of herb bundles, which restore my magic. And what's funny is that if you get them from this guard, first off, if you have too many, he gives you that message. And secondly, uh, you can get 15 from that guard. Whoops, didn't mean to believe. Uh, but you can only get 10 if you shop for them. Don't ask me why, just hide life. And so, obviously, if you want to get to a water palace, you just fall through a cl cloud in in the, in the sky palace. Duh. And yes, this game has really good music. They, <laughs> this game has horrible graphics, but it has music that's way better than the game itself. And this, uh, this palace has a ton of quest items, including the most important of which is the Sega Pack. Shoutouts to Blast the Process. And... We're going to use this item right now, because we can use it at any point. And let's see what the Sega Pack does. You've got some Sega products. It's a joke! So, yeah, this game has items that are solely in there to troll you and be a joke. That's legitimately it. <laughs> and because we got the Dragon's Fang, this guy loves to collect eccentric things. Turns out the Dragon's Fang is eccentric, and now we can raid his treasure stash. So now we're gonna pick up this pick up the stone. And wow, we're moving kind of slowly. Let's see. Uh, the stone. Oh wow, it's weighs well, ten thousand. Well, let's see what it does. It's heavy. It's a joke. <laughs> and uh, if you want to see why we never play the game in slowest, well, this is how you move when you're encumbered on slowest. <laughs> And this is how you move while not encumbered on slowest. Still very slow. That's why we never play the game in slowest, even if it's technically uh, like a faster, safer way to take out a boss. And this item is Gene Scroll, and we don't want to drop this, although we can because Super High Glide, because it is required to reveal the next dungeon. Okay, so we get the Yumi doll, and we get the brush. And let's check these items out. Hi, I'm Yumi. It's a joke. And the final item is the brush. Your smelly feet has been cured. It's a joke. So sorry, if it was smelling in here, that's my bad. But now my feet don't smell anymore, so everything should be good. And now that we have all the items we need, we are going back to City of the Woods to get uh, two level ups from defeating that dragon. Also, double check on food rations, because we don't want to starve to death. Why would a brush fix that? I don't know! <laughs> Ask Hydlide. We're in the world of Fairyland, you know? And now we're going to rest uh, before the first grind. This is, Or the first big grind, I should say. Um, we already had the first grind in the tower. Um, this is... Really the biggest grind, because we're gonna we're gonna try to get three levels from this grind, although two levels is also fine. And even though this grind is quite dangerous, it's still the safest place to grind and get good experience. Because these ro robots that I'm going to kill uh, give 105 experience. Okay. Oh wow, thanks turret. Also, fortunately, we have good health, so I can take at least a couple of hits. So what you're going to notice is that I'm going to take, like, one hit that's going to do a ton of damage like that. And then I'm going to take subsequent hits that are going to do a lot less damage. This game has a really weird damage system where, like, you don't... Where you take less damage, the less health you have. And also, these guys can drop bronze shields, uh, which are really bad because they weigh 10,000. And if you're wondering how I can tell without even moving, uh, they also make you turn more slowly. So 
So yeah, like even though it looks like I only take like one or two hits here, I can still take a hit or two after that. That being said, you still want to take it safe because if you get surrounded by two of them, then you can lose health super fast, and which is why you you don't necessarily need to keep your health topped off, but you need to keep it high, especially if you get sniped by um, a guy like that. And let me first, let me first, let me first, let me first, and this is why we got all those bundles of herbs. Okay, come on. Oh. So yeah. And if you're wondering how the weight system works, uh, basically you can carry more weight as you level up more. Once you get up to a certain level, you're pretty much capped out at roughly 30,000-ish. Doesn't really go up m uh, much higher than that. It's also worth noting that for a casual playthrough, you want to collect the Money Changer. Because this game is really weird about money, and each unit of money costs, uh, like, weighs the same amount. Ugh. Oh my god! Uh, let's actually... Okay, I'm gonna use the bundle of herbs, bundle of herbs, plus medicine, bundle of herbs, bundle of herbs. I'm gonna use the illusion spell, because we're actually really surrounded. So what the illusion... Oh, it... What the illusion spell does that makes all the enemies turn around and sometimes ignore you, but not that time. <sighs> oh my god. Yeah, and the bronze shield drops are completely random. Sometimes you'll get like four in a row. Other times you won't get like any, you know, after you kill ten enemies. It's... Very inconsistent. Oh, really? Come on, I need to kill that enemy. Yeah, you're, it really stinks if, like, you almost kill an enemy, but it runs away from you. Because then you have to chase it down and that wastes more time. Okay, my grind is not going so well, experience-wise. I will probably only get two levels from this grind. Uh, my target is 12,250 experience to get three levels. Uh, when I checked my experience, I was at about 8,500. So, we still have about mm, uh, three hours in-game time left. Ugh. Thanks, game. Really? Oh my god. This game's just being a jerk. Thanks, game. Oh no, bronze shield! Uh, yeah, and since I've used so many restoratives, I actually uh, have, have enough weight to actually equip the bronze shield. It doesn't give us a ton... Uh, magic. Okay, I can use two cure spells. I want to save 30 magic points so that I can still use the move spell to get out of here as quickly as possible um, once I'm done with the grind. And the bronze shield adds a bit of uh, armor, which is actually somewhat helpful. Yes, I can use one more. That's my last one. Don't use a cure spell. Don't use a cure spell. Don't use a cure spell. Do anything but use a cure spell. And the way armor works in this game is that you do actually take less damage, even if it's not very noticeable. Um, wow, I actually only need to kill one... Let's just kill two more enemies to be safe. And now I can actually go back to town, to City of the Woods. So, um, even if I didn't make my target, I would have to go back at 2300 hours, because then I have the tired, uh, whoops, I didn't get my third level up, because then I'd have the tired status effect. And we're going to use a time spell, which, uh, shifts us 24 hours, uh, sorry, uh, 12 hours in advance, 
so we can enter the shop so we can have a more efficient grind later. So in a level 12 route, we would actually only do one grind, and then we get our final level from just going through the game naturally. Um, in this route, we're gonna go up to level 13 um, from two grinds, and it's just much safer um, to do it this way. And even though we're just warping inside the same town, it does save a couple of screen transitions. And uh, Sega Junkie knows his speedrunning history. That is the man formerly known as Mike89. Uh, let me just check and see if I have enough food rations. Oh yeah, I have plenty. Yeah, I am good on equipment. Unfortunately, I've had pretty good health gains in this run. So I don't have to worry about health. <laughs> it is worth noting, I did say that health is one of the most important stats, and it doesn't really play a role until the very end of the game, and I forgot to set speed to fast, and that's why we don't grind on fastest. <laughs> Again, if you don't have at least 10 near-death moments in a super highlight run, it's not a real one. <laughs> it's, it just happens. Like... I could level up even more than 14, and I would still get near-death moments. Level 14 is like the nice balance between uh, speed and safety. And, you know, joke items are obviously, you know, RNG manipulation and marathon safety. So this time we're trying to get uh, 13,200 experience to get the last two levels we want. Um, we'll get the final level after this grind by just going through the game naturally, pretty much. Oh, thanks for slowing me down, game. What? I'm still... S oh, I think I know what it is. Um, so I did mention the money changer, which, um, just makes your change very efficient. You can also do that by just selling items in the store. It's an item in the overworld. It costs about 30 seconds to get. It's actually not really necessary for a run. It actually played a factor into getting encumbered there. Um, so basically every unit of money in this game weighs the same amount, whether it's, uh, 10 coin, 100 coin, or, uh, 1,000 coin. And, like, enemies drop coins in, like, units of... 10 and 100 never a thousand so uh you can and so especially at like lower level you can get some really inefficient uh weight wise combinations of coins and if you don't have the money changer you're just saddled with all those coins until you go to a shop and in a casual playthrough that's very bad because you know you're not gonna have a move spell right away and you're just gonna be like walking around super encumbered and unless if you start throwing away money which just doesn't feel good <laughs> It is worth noting that bundles of herbs are actually um, a pretty heavy item. So once I start using some to restore my magic, um, that also frees up my slots. So yeah. What's kind of neat about this game, and also very stupid and bad at the same time, is that I tried to go for more realism, which just ends up being really annoying in practice. Like, you can, you know, you can starve to death. You you know, you need to take care of your food, and that's really annoying. And you can get tired and not be able to kill anything and basically get trapped. And if you're trapped in dungeon without enough magic to, you know, use the move spell, then you're just kind of screwed <laughs> if any enemy approaches you. Okay, I think we'll be able to hit uh, my experience goal. We've had a, we've actually had a pretty good grind here. What's nice about the second grind is that's a lot safer than the first one, because I'm a higher level. So I not only have more health, I just kill things a lot faster. So they're a lot less likely to take my health down to a low point. 
What was that? You like hit me, triple hit me, or detached robot sword tentacle? And then those herbs, those herbs, those herbs, and oh wow, we have more than enough experience, so we're gonna go back to the city. Okay, not a great health gain. Very good health gain. So we have more than enough health to complete this run, which is awesome. And magic. And let me just check my natural grass. So ration of food. Uh, lots of herbs. Oh, yeah, I definitely need some of those. And I don't need any of those. I don't want to completely fill up a bundles of herbs. Because if I can get away with it, I want to not have to turn to this shop. So now that we've done the two grinds, um, we're done with grinding throughout the run, or at least any um, sustained grinding. So hopefully that wasn't too boring, and now we are actually going to go through the dungeon to get the item that we need. Um, it was actually two items. We need the space suit, so we don't die when we go to space, and the space compass, so we don't get lost in space. Okay, sure, why not? And one of the quest items, and another quest item we need is this. The sun oil. And with the sun oil... It will save you from the heat. It's a joke! Okay, that's really the last of the joke items right there. Um, the, for some reason, like, all the joke items are kind of crammed in the mid-game like that. And then there's, like, really not any in the late game. But I thought it would just be fun to show off the joke items because they're pretty funny. I especially like the brush because not only does it have the English mistake, it cures your smelly feet. We're playing this in fast so we don't, like, die right away. Oh, that's a really good RNG. So, um, bad RNG is when you have enemies in between the laser beams. You can disable them, but it's such a detour that it's much faster. And there's a spacesuit, and we are going to throw away the bronze shield. We're going to equip the spacesuit, which is not only a decent piece of armor, it also means we can go into space. body is becoming numb. My body has become numb to all the pain of running super high fly. That is true. Ow, 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 ah! So, there's a really annoying thing in this game where um, enemies off-screen can block you if they're one tile off-screen and you can't see them and you won't notice them until you can't transition into the next screen. It's really annoying. Alright, so... These super dangerous enemies that can fire at me like that, uh, they're worth a lot of experience. And these little cocoon peanuts, called goobas, are are not a lot of experience, but they do give me a lot of money. Which is not really necessary at this point in the game, but it's nice. And while you don't really want to go super out of your way to kill these enemies, um, it is nice to just get some experience uh, from these enemies. If they're a long way, I'm actually having really good luck with these enemies. And here is where we get to no hide lie lore. See, Fairyland wasn't lying. And now we check it again for more lore. And now we get the space compass. If I don't go here, the space compass does not trigger. What's funny is that the space compass is technically not a required item. Uh, the task doesn't collect the space compass because it just zooms straight where the spaceship is. The problem is the location of the spaceship is random. It is in one of four corners, but it the even in those corners, it's like a there's like eight or nine screens it can be in in that corner, and the entire grid is like thirty by thirty. It's really big. So 
we need the space compass just to be able to have a rough idea where the spaceship is. Um, if there was a way to manipulate the spaceship, then we wouldn't have to take this trip to get the space compass. That was actually super good RNG. I did not have to use a single item to cure myself. Or a single item to restore magic points. And we did get a space compass, right? Okay, that would be terrible if I didn't get it. And yeah, so we're going to go to space. And you're like, where's space? I haven't seen anywhere for space. I've barely seen the overworld of this game. Well, you'll see. Makes real good sense. Um, so the overworld music is actually like a really nice funky tune. We just don't hear it much because I spend no more than like five or six screens in the overworld at a time. And we fall into space. If you fall at any earlier time, you just die. <laughs> However, if you have the space suit, you fall into space because that's how space works, right? You know, with like anti-gravity and all that. Ooh. Yeah, so we're not bothering to really fight anything here. Um, of our I could fight a couple of Goobas along the way, but those guys with the swords do a lot of damage, and they're not really good experience either. They're actually worth less experience than our robots, while also having more health. And the reason why I'm walking so much without checking the space compass much is that you basically have to go diagonally in this direction about ten times before you're even close to where the spaceship is. that and okay so we're gonna go down we're gonna go left and where is it now okay so it's still down to the left um, yeah, it doesn't feel good to check the space compass that much but sometimes you just have to do it and you can only approach the spaceship from the bottom and now we're on the spaceship so let's check how much experience we have oh yeah I have plenty of experience to get the next level. Um, it is worth noting that those space penguins are actually quote unquote good monsters, so them, my moral fiber decreased, not like that matters. Um, if you have low moral fiber, you'll get more traps in treasure chests, which doesn't matter because I have the spell with disarm. Okay. And um, you get more items from townspeople, which also doesn't matter. And let's see. So fastest. I did get the one right. Yep. Okay, good. So we're going back to the Cave of the Dead. Um, technically, we could try to collect this item earlier. But if you try to do that, the game will just say there's nothing there. And there's a time door talisman, which we need to go to the first dimension. And let's see. So we're going to uh, save right here. It's technically not necessary to save here, but since... Uh, if we die along the way to the city of illusion in the first dimension, uh, we would go back to before I went to the spaceship. Uh, it's just good to take a safety there. Come on. There we go. I'm just going to check my items real fast. Okay, I'm good. So here's the first dimension. Uh, so you have the plant enemies from the early areas of the overworld, and then you have the really super dangerous slimes and uh, de demon statues that just do a ton of damage and have a ton of health. So while these enemies have a lot of experience to give you, they're not worth grinding off of just because they take a fairly long time to kill. And now at the City of Illusion, 
And that's why we had to go to the spaceship to get the horns to go to the city of illusion. Yeah, so this game has a ton of nonsensical triggers that you figure out in a casual playthrough by just talking to a ton of people and figuring out their very cryptic pointers. Um, I have enough food rations. I have enough for bundles. I do you want fake medicine? Do you want some cats and knives? Should be okay. Just double check. I got the holy water. Yes. And we are going to sleep at the end because we want a point for the move spell. I have no idea what's happening in this game. That makes two of us count, Gooby. And that makes two of us. So we use the holy water to open um, Viralis' lair. You have to use it every time. Uh, you enter the lair, so let's only enter the lair once, hopefully. I'm gonna set the speed to fast so we don't get murderized instantly and you start to poke at us, because enemies in here are very dangerous like that! Thank you for demonstrating that enemy. And we are collecting the flame sword, because even though it's. If you were paying attention, it's not the strongest weapon in the game, it is still worth collecting. Um, we can throw away the space compass because we're not returning to space. And he's should be enough to uncumber me. Wow, that is really bad enemy RNG. So technically the cat's eyes are not necessary, but they still save time in my opinion, because just knowing where the enemies are oh, saves so much time over not knowing. Um, you know, like knowing when you'll get murdered, like there. <laughs> Yeah, this track is probably the best track in the game. It's like the most rockin' track. And it's called DRAGON! With a bunch of exclamation points. In all caps. You're gonna hear the sick riff real soon. Because I got bad luck. I mean, I got good luck. Because you get to hear the sick riff. So for Viralis, we're going to set the speed to slow, and you're going to see, um, technically, you're supposed to collect the Sacred Lights if you have high enough Moral Fiber, which reduces his uh, health bars down to one, but you're going to see why that's really useless real soon. And, yeah, okay, still have a Light Fire. That's good. Oh, wow. That's perfect luck. And let's see how many health bars he has. So occasionally, he'll glitch out, and he will have less health than usual like that. <laughs> um, and that's why it's... And that's why morality is completely useless. And no, there's no way you can take that quote out of context, ever. At all. I'm sure. And we need the Statue of Viralis to get to the final dungeon, and now we can move out to the City of the Woods. Um, now that we've killed Viralis and he gave us about 3,000 experience, um, we can go to the church for our final level up of the run. Oh, that's a nice beefy amount of... And I don't know why that happens. Sometimes you'll, sometimes you'll have to go through all ten health bars. Other times, uh, he only has one. That glitch is very inconsistent, and I have no idea what causes it. So we're going to buy as many bundles of herbs as we can. Because that is very important. We're also going to buy strong medicines. And we're going to buy a bunch of food rations. All right, and I do need to sell the lightsaber because we will actually not be using the lightsaber for the final dungeon, despite being the strongest weapon. Because you need a projectile for the final boss, who is Kaizak. It is not Viralis, unlike a Virtual Hydlide, which is actually a remake of the first Hydlide. And um, we will be fighting Kaizak. We just fought the final boss of. Actually, might as well just 
And now we have no more use for the spacesuit. We're not in space anymore, and we just beat uh, Boralus. The spacesuit is actually necessary. Having some armor is actually necessary for the strategy I used in that fight. Did I just buy a knife? Whatever. And very main mail, it is the strongest armor. And just double checking. Yes, we have life water. Great. And we're going to move to the City of Illusion. So where I'm going is actually a marathon safety. Um, this is just to make it so that if I die on Kaizak, I won't lose five plus minutes. And that is getting the exit talisman right here. If you have the Isle Statue of Rallis, you should be able to enter the Door of Time. I'm giving you all, you all the lore. The Door of Time is located northeast of the city. Unless you have this talisman, there's no way out. Here, you can have a talisman. I no longer have any use for it. If you have a talisman, you can return through the Door of Time. This guy really loves being redundant. No human has ever seen the Kaizak. The Kaizak. Ooh, very special. A fairy and I went through the Door of Time together, but I think the fairy was captured by Kai the Kaizak. Kaizak's weakness? Try to understand his movements. The rest is up to you. Are you the chosen one? So it's worth noting that that's the only clue you have that you need to rescue a fairy in the final dungeon. The final dungeon. So I actually did not use a guide to beat this game until the final dungeon. <laughs> the final dungeon I just gave up because the final dungeon's real stupid. I uh, don't want to get hit by, by that slime. Okay. So, if you talk to the people in town, they say that you can't use the statue of Varalis until it's midnight. What they really mean is that um, you can't use it until nighttime. So, you just use the time spell to make it nighttime, and then you use the statue of Varalis. And the exit talisman is what let, what lets us exit this dungeon. We can't use a move spell in this dungeon, actually. So if we wanted to, like, grind here and make some safety, um, you actually have to go all the way back here and use the exit talisman on that tile that I started on. Um, the enemies here are super dangerous. They do give a lot of experience and money, but that doesn't matter at this point because we're not going to go back to the church for any level ups. Oh no! I got stuck in a paralysis tile. Did not mean to do that. I didn't even know that was a paralysis tile. Help. You, if you're stuck in a paralysis tile, you just kind of sit here for a very long time. Uh, just let me move. Just, just let me move, game. Okay, there. Okay, good. <laughs> I mean, I was just trying to show off the traps in this game. Yes. So if it looks like I'm moving a little slowly through these uh, glassy tiles, that's probably because I am, because if you fall off these tiles, you see how it looks all like black and bottomless there? That's because it's very bottomless and you die, and no spacesuit or anything will save you, or cloudstone. Because this is super high blide, and the super is in all the trolling and pain. Oh, jeez. Away. What? Just how bottomless is it? Well, if you want to try out this game, uh, you can experience how bottomless it is. It is game over level bottomless. That much I can confirm. Oh no. Ow. Yeah, so. Um, you notice me use the illusion spell, uh, like once or twice when I was leveling, get some enemies off me. I might use it a couple more times because it's actually really useful. Um, if there's a bunch of enemies surrounding you, it, wow. Uh. Ah, thanks game. Thanks game. Ooh. Ah, this is some great luck already. Can you show off the bottomless pits like you show off the browse? No, I don't want to spend that much time showing off all the goodies this game has to offer. Even though there's so many goodies. Just so many. Hmm, let's use the illusion spell, actually. Okay, good. 
And, uh, yeah, we have done fast, so, um, you see how these guys are murdering me really fast? They do it even faster on fastest, and, oh, wow, I'm gonna use Illusion Spell again. Alright, since there's two enemies up there, I'm not gonna take the top route, even though that's more efficient. Because not getting killed by enemies is also very efficient. Um, it is worth noting that that room I was on the in, in on the left, um, that tile I hit was to, um trigger the locking mechanism, which lets me free the fairy. And the reason why I'm rescuing the fairy in the first place is because only fairies can see Kaizak, because ah, super high blind war. Oh no. This is... Okay. Thank you for saving me, though. Uh, see? The fairy will become my eyes. Uh, if you do try to approach Kaizak without having the fairy, um, Kaizak will just be like, ha ha ha, you can't see me! Nee, 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 nee. I guess plays hide and seek with you, and then you have to find the fairy. And let's see. And so this um, room I'm going to is not technically <sighs> necessary, uh, but it is a safety. Try using the illusion spell again. So if an enemy is hitting you mid-attack, the illusions, uh, they'll still hit you uh, after the illusion spell. And we approach this treasure chest from the top, because if we approach it from the left, we actually hit a warp tile. And we are encumbered because the camping gear weighs 5,000. Let's get rid of some herb bundles. Let us uh, use some food rations. And just throw away some medicine flasks. Yes, that's enough. Good. Ah. Thanks, game. Wow, I should pay more. I looked at the chat for like half a second. That was a big mistake. <laughs> Fortunately, if I go down to zero health, I don't die right away. I still have the life water. It's still not a good thing to do. Um... Oh, I am actually running really low on resources. Illusion spell? You want to work for me? You want to work for me? Okay. No! <laughs> okay. Of course. Of course. This is normal, except I am very low in health. So let's use some expensive medicine. Ooh. Why can't I kill anything? That is a little disturbing. Oh, I used my life water. That's kind of bad. I wasn't paying attention to my health. Okay. We are going to use the camping gear. Fortunately, we have enough health so that we didn't need the life water. And the life water saved us from the dying. So what the camping gear does is that makes us a save point. The reason why we need the exit talisman is because the game doesn't want to soft lock you in here without having the exit talisman. Even though you can soft lock yourself by throwing away various quest items if you feel like it. Um, let's use this. Let's use the bundle of herbs. And we are good to go. Oh, we actually need to speed the fastest. Okay, yes, I'm doing damage. We're going to fight Kaizak. Oh, the Lord in Darkness in your crater. It's a pity I must die here. You can see me, can you? But you can destroy me? So the way Kaizak works is that he actually works on a fixed pattern. He always shoots you if he opens his mouth three times and his mouth hasn't been fired at um, in that period. So that's why I'm constantly firing his mouth, even though that's not doing damage. You need to pop his basically warts or pimples that are on his side.
And then after you do this, no, nope, do you fire him? No, you fall in his mouth and time. Uh, if and that is why health is the most important stat. If you don't have enough health, uh, Kaizak, um, you can't complete the game because the sequence where you leap in a Kaizak's mouth to, I guess, stab him from the inside doesn't work, and you just game over. I would expect nothing less. And the ending to this game is pretty great. It's a pretty great twist. <laughs> and, uh, it was so about a 5740, by the way. My run was what? About a 5740. Okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, my best quote-unquote marathon time is uh, like a 53-minute time. That's very RNG-dependent. As you can see, Kaizak created this universe, created me, the fairies, the Statue of Morales, the crystal, everything. I only made one mistake. I created you in the likeness of myself. Only you are my antithesis. So, yes. <laughs> he never expected me to grow. So, yes, this game is basically saying that Kaizak <laughs> is god or the creator and you are the devil basically <laughs> <laughs> because i lied things super high lied things and the game get, and the ending just gets even more nonsensical and uh, i will actually be uh, running this for rpg limit break um which will be uh may the It'll be May 6th to the 11th, if I'm not mistaken. It's basically the first full week of May. It'll be a really good marathon. Lots of good RPG runs. In, and this game. And this game. They do have a bad and wacky block. Uh, and this and this is, the game uh, starts off that block. Hell yeah. Looking forward to it. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> Thank you again uh, for the... Beautiful conclusion to our hide lie block. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, there's only so many hide lie games you can show off. I guess maybe someday someone will do, run hide lie two, which is exclusive to Japanese PCs. I'll get on it. Yeah. And hide lie one, which you is like you know NES and Japanese PCs, so I guess it wouldn't be on a blast the process. So we have actually completed. The, the saga of Sega Highlights. Although, as I said before, <laughs> Virtual Highlight is a remake of the original Highlight. So technically, you've covered two Highlights with Virtual Highlight. So yeah, as you float in the darkness, somehow the world gets restored. Oh, as sorry, Pog Champ fl floats floats in the darkness. <laughs> that, that, that's basically the the that's the only part where your name really appears is there. And if you check the status screen, which I do check a couple of times. It is worth noting that this marathon route is about five minutes slower uh, than the record attempt or level 12 route. My record on this game is actually a 4231, and that can still be improved um, with some even tighter routing. But as I said before, that's really unsafe. And it's worth noting that the way Kaizak works is that it's kind of ironic because the more levels you have, the less health you actually need to uh, kill him in the final mouth sequence. Uh, it is also worth noting that for the final mouth sequence, you can have all the armor on you want, uh, you know, the most powerful weapons. It does not matter. All that matters is your health. And that is why health is the most important stat in Super High Light. <laughs> because good game. Good game. And that is Super High Light. And uh, the next game coming up, if I'm not mistaken, is a game that's actually a lot more super, and that is uh, Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> Race with uh, Zaxxon and Fat Body. Exactly. Wow, I don't even need to do this. Do you all take my job? <laughs> like, well, you know, I'm I, might take have, a nap. I might have done this a couple of times before. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mike knows what he's doing. But he's right. Stick around. We'll be right back with Sonic the Hedgehog with Zaxxon and Fat Body. 